All right, so I'd like to now give you some specific examples. And I'm going to start with OH compounds, which is mainly going to be alcohols. So if it's the top priority group, then we're going to name this as an alkanol, like ethanol, hexanol, something like that. But if we have a higher priority group, like a ketone or a carboxylic acid around, then we're going to name it as a hydroxy something something. So this would be the prefix now. Um, so a couple of examples. So we have a five carbon chain and the OH is our top priority group here. So this becomes um, a pentan one all and the other substituents are laid out alphabetically uh, coming before that. They're both at the four position in this structure, uh, we have a, uh, a methyl group and a fluorine. So it's four fluoro, four methyl, pentan, one ol. You may, in some older uh, books, read uh, four fluoro, four methyl, one pentanol. Uh, that's the older UPAC system, which you still see used a lot in chemical catalogs and so on. This would be, uh, now you might want to name this from this end, but if we do that, that puts the um, priority group uh, at position three. And we actually want to minimize the position of the suffix. So in fact, this isn't named as a butan three own, it's named as a butan two own so that we uh, put the, we start numbering from the end nearer the priority group. Now on tests, I'm usually quite gentle with things like this, but uh, something you need to be aware of. So the hydroxy here is the substituent because it's lower priority than the ketone. Also, um, in the older system, this would have been a hydroxy 2-butanone, uh, again, that's uh, the, the old system. Okay, now what about an OH on a benzene ring? So here we're going to number this way round. We're going to put the OH as our top priority group. It's higher than the amino group. It's higher than the nitro group. Uh, notice that we go this way round because that way the numbers become one, three, and four. The OH is automatically number one. Um, if we were to go this way round, uh, we'd have four nitro, five amino. So make sure you go around the circle the right way. And we get Okay, so that's uh, uh, the OH compounds. Okay, next I'd like to talk about some singly bonded nitrogen compounds. Um, there are um, some with double and triple bonds, which we won't get to right now. But we have an amine. Now, we have a variety of different amines. We can get, this is a primary amine. This is a secondary amine. And we can also get a tertiary one like that. And the naming can get complicated if you have complicated tertiary means. So on your exam, I'm going to avoid really complicated cases of that. I also want you to realize that if you have a carbonyl next to the nitrogen, 
it's no longer uh, an amine, it's called an amide or amide, depending on where you are. In England, we call these amines and we call these amides. Um, but in the US, it's normally amine and amide. And this indicates, if it's IDE, it indicates you've got acetyl bondeau right next door. And that strongly affects the property of the nitrogen, makes it much less basic. And just as with amines, where we can have primary, secondary, and tertiary, we can also have primary, secondary, and tertiary amides as well. We can also get amines attached to benzene rings. And just as with the OH group we had earlier, the uh, benzene ring affects the properties of this nitrogen somewhat. So it tends to be given a different name. This is described as an aniline. Now, uh, there are some naming systems that name it still as an, uh, as an amine. The uh, CAS system doesn't recognize uh, an aniline as a, as a valid name. But aniline is commonly used in UPAC to indicate um, this kind of system. So you will see both, uh, but usually I will stick to calling these aniline derivatives. Okay, so how do you name these kinds of things? So you would name this um, something like methanamine, ethanamine, propanamine, things like that. The older naming system is still widely used though for these, so you'll often hear uh, methylamine, ethylamine, propylamine, things like that. But for the, the systematic UPAC name, uh, it's named like propanamine and so on. And amides are actually named in a similar way. So you'd have uh, ethanamide, propanamide, things like that. If we have higher priority groups present, then the amine is named using the prefix system. So we say aminoethanol, amino uh, propanol, and things like that. So here are a couple of examples. So in this example, the nitrile is the top priority group. That's actually a C triple bond N. And so the amino group becomes the substituent. Oh, sorry, that should be amino. Like I said, it becomes amino. So it's at the three position. Uh, when we're looking at the nitrile, we have to include the carbon of the nitrile and not forget about it. Now. I gave you some simple examples with just one R group attached to the uh, nitrogen, but what do you do if you have multiple groups? And since nitrogen forms three bonds, that's quite common. Well, on a test, I'm not going to give you the really complicated ones, but I will give you some simple ones like this. <clears throat> and what you have to do is you put a, a, a capital N in front of the substituent to indicate that it's on the nitrogen. So in this case, we have a five carbon chain. That has substituents on it, these two methyls, 
And then we have a simple ethyl group, which I've actually drawn out uh, more completely. It could be just shown by a, you know, by a line, uh, but I wanted to show it more clearly. Um, this is the simple group. This is the more complex group. So we're going to make this the main root. And then for the ethyl group, we're just going to put N-ethyl, or if you're British, N-ethyl. And what if you've got more than one group? Well, in a case like this, this is going to be our main group. So now the amine is just a prefix. But how do we get a prefix that's got groups attached to it? It's getting a bit complicated now. So. Our priority group is the ketone. Uh, that determines the fact that we're numbering from this end, one, two, three, four. It's going to be a butanone. So and we have a dimethylamino group in front. And because the group that's at position four is a complex one. We're going to put it in parentheses, and we have to do this. So that's four NN dimethylamino, close parentheses, uh, butan 2 own. Now you can see why organic chemists rarely use these names. They're useful in catalogs and databases. But in fact, if an organic chemist wants to describe this, uh, 99 times out of 100, they'll draw the structure on the board or on a piece of paper. That's how organic chemists communicate.